Lotso was a girl a-runnin' in a group. She had a high-speed motor in a 44 coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look at Buddy Hotter, Rod and Large. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. Well, the, the, the blackout is going to leave us just enough time for me to talk about for me to talk about the electrification of my car world, which I'm somewhat happy about, to be honest with you. But here is a study done by the Anderson Economic Group. For a gas car on a 100-mile trip, gets 33 miles per gallon, and at 281 a gallon, it would cost $8.58. On a 100-mile trip, that's not right. But... Oh, yeah, you get eight, I don't know, those numbers don't sound right, but a mid-sized price EV like Chevy Volt or Tesla 3 Leaf would cost twelve ninety five with commercial charging. Now, that's th they're talking about per mile, 281 per mile or something like that. Anyway, this uh, this commercial charging, and that's, oh, that's for one year of driving. They're talking twelve ninety five and 280 or 858 uh, probably a, a week or something. The electric level one charger, if you have, get one for home, about 600 bucks, 120 volts. The level two charger, which is big, $1,600, that's 240 volts. volts. Well, plus an electrician, plus you have to get your house wiring made ready for this thing. I mean, it's, it's not just a little thing. Okay, on one year of driving for 12,000 miles, an internal combustion engine at those rates will cost $1,030 to drive for 12,000 miles. An electric car will cost $1,554. So it's about $420 more, $425. Yeah. Plus now, <laughs> you got to find a charger too when you're, when you're on your drive. Well, of course, if you're driving around town for one year, 12,000 miles, you can live with a little bit of deficit. You're you're really good for the for the air. No, you're not. That's not a green car. Don't kid yourself. Electric vehicles are not green. They are, however, quite efficient, and it's turning out very fast. And I like oh, yeah. that. Electric vehicle tax in Michigan. I'm using Michigan because that's where most of them are being made. Is about 135 to 235, depending on the model of electric car you own. But now, you remember, you have to go miles out of your way to find a fast charger. You're gonna, everybody can find a slow charger, but you're not gonna. You're gonna stay at the. You're gonna stay at the. Uh, the bar for 12 hours. I, you better not. Your wife's gonna have a tantrum. Uh, luxury vehicles percentage is about the same with those that I gave you. The ten thousand thirty dollars and fifteen fifty four for electric. Now you want to hear a good one, Eric. You're gonna love this. The rate for charging in Michigan. It ranges from 31 cents per kilowatt hour to 66 cents per kilowatt hour. But Michigan residents only have to pay 17 cents. Yeah. Hmm. So I'm going to run right up there and buy a cab and not. You guys are crooks. That's crazy. Who, who designed that? They should never let that out of the bag. You know, and now you're going to take a vacation in that electric car. Okay? If your current vehicle your current gas vehicle, you drive, you gas up, drive 400 plus miles, stop at a gas station, fill up, and continue on your way. Half an hour shot. Some electric vehicles now get 300 plus miles on a charge, but then you must stop for one hour, two hours, before you can carry on. How, how long? It depends on what kind of charger you stop at. If it's a supercharger, mm -hmm. and you pay the extra freight, which would probably be 66 cents, uh, you're going to, yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to be a little sooner. You'll be maybe an hour. Now the route. What about driving a route, an electric car? Now, I'm talking about right now, not the future, right now. Because these high gas prices have people out talking about, oh, I should get an electric car. That's just crap. I should just get an electric car. Think about it before you do, because you might be ready for that electric car, but that electric car is not ready for the roads in America right now. Right. Like I, I reported last week, the, uh, the government has 1,100 chargers. They need 100,000 chargers across the country. They've got to be everywhere. 
and I have a little problem with what happens if you go to the mall and you park and all the other chargers are taken and you can't recharge so you just go in and do your shopping you come out oh cripe I forgot to recharge now you're going to have to plug it in because now there's an opening or maybe there's not or maybe there's some guy that plugged in and his charger's done just like at the laundromat when their dryer's done you take their clothes out and put them on the table some do some throw them on the floor okay. uh well you're taking up a dryer and you shouldn't be i learned that when i was a little kid and anyway my mom was ornery anyhow <laughs> your electric charger is going to be the same way it, there is a there is a potential for conflict on at electric charging stations right now because there's not enough of them so if you go out and buy an electric car now huh, unless you're going to go the whole route and buy that big charging thing for the house and pay all that money and then not go on any trips because you can drive it around town. But you got to have some place here to charge it. You got to have home. Okay, now how about if you're going to go on a trip, what about your route? You can't drive maybe at the most 10 minutes without seeing another gas station, okay? They're everywhere. There's fueling stations for everybody. But to drive your electric vehicle for a trip, you have to find a charging station. Better plan ahead. Plus, when you get to the charger or chargers, and find them all in use, you wait. One more thought on this electric electricity thing. And I, I, I'm worried that there'd be a lot of young people discouraged from taking on the role of auto technician. I'm, I've been preaching, my friend Simon Leon and I have been preaching, uh, the rest of the guys, John Golfus, all the hot rod boys, they're preaching about the young people getting back into the trades. And one of them that's very important to all of us guys is auto mechanics. We need technicians. We, and more than ever, more than ever, we're going to need actual technicians. The, uh, the, the girls, I mean, the, uh, the, the Lowell High School auto tech class had three or four girls in their class. Mm. Because they know the future is not going to be the grease monkey with the little hat on his head turned backwards. And, you know, th th those days are over. It's going to be, well, I'll read you something that I, I actually wrote part of this. And the, I think somebody swiped it, but I'm not going to say a word. Uh, but he put it a little more eloquently than I did. This is out of a trade publication. As the industry continues to evolve, staying up to date with emerging technology is a natural pro progression for those who keep up to date with the industry. Mechanics have had to adapt to changing cars for decades now. Tell me about it. Whether it was the carburetor emerging to fuel injection, hello, anti-lock brakes, hello, of the 18, 1980s, or the backup camera of the early 2000s, hiya, hiya. This... <laughs> The job of mechanic hasn't shrunk due to electrification. If anything, it has just expanded. What does this mean for our futures? It's up to each and every one of us to stay on top of this technological advancements, of these technological advancements. So here's the deal. To, to qualify to be an auto mechanic now, you will first of all have to have some kind of mechanical coordination i mean you have to be able to hold a screwdriver work a wrench a ratchet a gun blah 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 uh there's always going to be there's always going to be brake jobs and suspension and shock absorbers and steering and tires and you know things that are things that are bound to wear out it's not all going to be about electronics but in the electronics end of it if you're good and you're very good as a computer operator you're going to be linking into these cars. I know I have a young man works for me now that, that I had trained at one time, and now he's back, and he's he's got electronics coming out his ears, and he spends a lot of time at the computer, but he gets a lot of cars diagnosed and repaired. And that's what it's going to be. You're going to be looking at things like communications. You're going to be looking at things like power outages, power surges, like we just had. How about that? Or false negatives false positives there is going to be because you got to remember you just took a very expensive battery hooked it up to a very expensive set of computers of which on your car there's probably even your car now your internal combustion car has probably 10 or 11 computers on it or more there could be uh, some of the Cadillacs got 20 so 
But you've just taken all this and put it into a vehicle that sits outside in the snow, drives down the road in the rain, hits chuck holes, drives over railroad tracks, uh, has the potential of being in an accident and, and jarring things. I, you've just done that. I mean, you, well, you didn't do it. The automaker did. And hopefully this stuff is all mounted in such a way and put together in such a way that it's still drivable. When, you, when something happens so that you can get to your auto technician and he can plug in, hook up, or start testing and find a problem and repair it for you. Some of these new batteries have cells that are replaceable. Oh, yeah, the, the technology is amazing. I've, I've kept up with it. I, I, I'll tell you like it is. I'm 70 years old. I read trade magazines all day, every day. I'm at the computer all day at work. All I do is help diagnose cars. That's what I do. That's because I kept up with it, and I'm probably one of the better ones around it yeah yeah i don't want to i'm not bragging i'm done with that i gotta tell you that that's what i do all day and i can see the change and i have to smell the change and i have to i have to be able to take it and chew it i have to know what i'm doing otherwise i'm looking at a car i'll be looking at a wiring diagram that makes absolutely no sense to me if i don't know what the system is about so that's what it's all going to be all about computer analysis computer technology diagnostic uh you won't have to worry about gasoline and fuel problems you won't have fuel injector problems and yes i do remember when there was carburetors eric don't give me i remember when there was no catalytic converters there were spark plugs and and points and condensers i said when i broke into business in 69 we didn't have any of this this is all brand new so i had to keep up all along the way i had to I had to stay with the, with, the, with the publications and with the training and go to school and do what I had to do to, to learn and do my thing. Mm -hmm. Not pretty, but it was pretty enough to make a great living. I made a good living out of it. I've had a lot of fun. So, And you know what? The new people coming up in the technician world will have just as much fun with their revelations.